What is up, everybody? We are back once again. Thursday. We love saying that Thursday. It is episode 99, our last episode before we hit the amazing 100th episode, which will be live this weekend at DragonCon, uh, episode 100. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about tonight. We got a lot of good stuff to talk about. Uh, some Disney, some DC Universe stuff that just came out literally yesterday. Um, some Blades, some Walking Dead, some Spawn. Um, what happened with Alec Baldwin? We're going to talk about that. Um, Big Trouble in Little China. And we lost a couple really good uh, creators from the comic book world this week. Um, so we will give a bit of a tribute to them and talk about them for a moment. Um, we'll probably do that first because that's a bit of a heavier topic. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about this. Uh, this is an award-winning show here. We get an award-winning show. We never mentioned that. Um, there is a comic book community awards, and we were nominated for pretty much every single um, category that was that was available. So I was pretty proud of that. But um, for some reason, first time I mentioned that. Um, and um, that's pretty much it. Um, we'll get into topics. I um, want to give a couple of shout-outs to the folks in the chat, as we normally do. Uh, we have Sweet Exorcist. He was first. I see Gomez and everybody. Broski, Jackio, Miss Hustle, and Legend Storm is here as well. So very cool. Um, I did want to mention something. I did get a box in the mail. Um, I usually kick it over to you guys to do um, like your updates for the week first. But I'm excited to see what's in this box. So I want to I want to open it up. So I'm going to do that I'm going to do that live. Do it. Open this the came, box. This came from our good friend, uh, supporter of the show, uh, Brian B from uh, Phil's Comic Shop. Take the time collectibles Brian B. This is YouTube. So give me this. I was over at the shop over the weekend and I was talking with um uh artist he's a recording artist and a comic book creator as well his name is absolute and he um has a really positive good message you know anti-bullying um you know about pollution which is a big thing here oh cool um so i was over at the shop and he gave me this um when i was over there um <laughs> okay so i th this is proof awesome okay really cool um this is definitely proof that he watches the show i talked about this book recently Oh, oh, oh. Hang on, hang on. There we go. Oh my god. Talked about this book recently, right? Remember I mentioned that? How excited I was to get that? Kind of into those oversized books. So, what he sent, or gave me actually, he didn't have to send it because it's down the street. Is issue two? Cool, right? Oh, this is beautiful. And I think. Yes, issue three. And I believe that's all three. That's the the first three issues of the the arc for the movie adaptation. So that's awesome. And this is this is a really beautiful print. Valentina, twenty sixteen. Check that out. Oh, uh, nice. It's beautiful. It's yeah. really nice. I gotta get yeah, a wow. print for that. So yeah, really stoked about that. And this is uh, some protection for it, I believe. This is just like a hard thing. So cool. Um, so thank you very much, Brian. Um, awesome. Um, excited to do that. Oh, I didn't want to wait <laughs> to show you guys those things. Um, so I was really excited to you know get those. And I have that full set. So um, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to you guys while I enjoy these books here. Um, and I want to find out what you guys have been up to for the week. I'll go first because Edwin's in deep thought. <laughs> um, I actually started that uh, Friday live show That was a lot of fun last week A lot of great people showed up in the comments So I really appreciate that Got some great comments post live on that um, So that was that was a lot of fun And of course, you know, you try to start a show But this week, not going to be able to do it Because i got to go down and get my badge at Dragon Con tomorrow Instead But maybe I'll be able to do some live thing From the street level down there tomorrow Who knows? So just watch out for the internets. Um, and then some strange reason I went ahead and started a Facebook page for Exile State Comics. So if you guys want to cruise on over there and give it a like or follow or whatever you do to pages now, <laughs> um, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll get some stuff up on there. Just trying to, you know, promote a little bit and spread out as much as I can, I guess. Um, but yeah, so just other than that, really pumped up about this weekend, m getting to meet up with Jesse at Dragon Con and chill out, walk around that place for a while and see what all we can find and what trouble we can get into. So yeah, super pumped. That's it. 
You can go, Edwin. <laughs> Don't go broke, man. Don't go broke. <laughs> it's easy to do with those things. I don't know, right? Yep. yep. Uh, I'm not doing a whole lot. Just uh, pressing and buying a bunch of stuff I really don't need, but need to get before they go up in price. <laughs> and uh, 181, right? Uh, you can never have enough of those, yeah. Um, but no, the only thing I really got going on right now is I'm trying to raffle this off right here. Spawn number one, CGC 9.8. I got four spots left over on my Instagram. If anybody wants to check that out, it's $17 a spot, four spots left. And if we get them all filled up, we'll go ahead and run it tonight. But other than that, I really don't have much else going on. Thank you for your time. <laughs> cool. So he was nice enough to include a bag. So I just put them on both sides. It's big enough to hold them both. So sweet. Nice. So does each one of those issues, is it like one for a new hope, one for uh empire strikes back one for return of the jedi no these are uh, like a, the it's treasury size it's the bigger size um but it's the same issues as the regular size for um for the that first volume oh, okay. so each of those it's oversized but it's still the same and the first three issues of that first volume were a new hope so each mm, one of these is a okay. segment of that so yeah it's it's the same thing it just the, the bigger size format which is cool gotcha. i gotta put this back in um, and since we're talking about, um, let's go. There we go. Perfect. Um, since we're talking about, you know, books in the seventies and stuff, um, we lost two, two, uh, really big names, um, in the comic book community. Um, really it happened actually today, um, in terms of the announcements. I think one of them passed yesterday and one today. I'm talking about Marie Severin and Gary Friedrich. Uh, Marie was 89 years old. She had like a stroke previously, so she had another stroke. She was really bad health, and then this time she succumbed to it. Um, if you don't know about Mar uh, Marie Severin, she's um, the comic book legal defense fund called her the first lady of comics. She's really important. She was one of uh, the really big ones and one of the last people that came up uh, from the EC talent, you know, 1950s EC comics, all the horror stuff. Um, she started at that time. She had a brother named John Severin. And um, he was, you know, obviously working at the time. He asked her to color some of his pages. And that's kind of how she got her start all the way back in the 50s. She left for a while. She came back. She worked for Atlas, which actually became Marvel, of course, right? I um, mean, once she did that, she was working on Hulk, on Conan, um, Tales to Astonish, um, Thor, Justin. She worked on that. Um, Muppet Babies, even. Um, her title was head colorist, and that lasted until about 1972. Um, she designed and is actually the co-creator for Spider-Woman. And she was uh, the core illustrator for Marvel's, what they called the, that sounds really fancy. It was just kind of like merchandise designing. Uh, the Special Projects Division is what they called it. Um, and then she also won an Inkpot Award, um, Lifetime Achievement Award in 2017. And um, in 2001, she was entered into the uh, Will Eisner Hall of Fame. So that's kind of her body of work. Really, really high level of her life and a couple of books that she worked on. And that kind of hopefully illustrates yeah, just how important she was to comic book history and kind of the impact that she had. So huge loss there. Um, she, Funny enough, she worked on the Hulk. And the other guy that I'm going to mention, Gary Friedrich, worked on the Hulk as well. Um, he was 75. Um, and Roy Thomas, actually. Um, and I'll, I'll kick the mic over to you guys in a second, but um, really good lifelong friends with Roy Thomas. And Roy Thomas posted something, and I'll, I'll tell you what it said in a second here, um, that he passed away due to Parkinson's. Um, he actually co-created um, Ghost Rider with Mike Plug and Roy Thomas, his friend. And they kind of like, they were in contention for a while. It was a really famous debate. Friends, but debating over who should get the credit for creating uh, Ghost Rider. You know, like who who did the backstory? Who said he should be you know a stunt driver? Who's a flame head suit and all that? Eventually, they just settled and said all three of us were co-creators. Um, do you know who Son of Satan is? Part of that whole mythos. Damien. Yes. <laughs> Damien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he created uh, Son of Satan as well. He got like this little idea. Stanley came over, put something on his desk, and was like, "Okay, I'm going to make this character." Um, 
So there's that. Uh, Roy said, uh, Roy Thomas, that is, um, he said, I won't go into details at this point, but I wanted to mention that one of my oldest and dearest friends, Gary Friedrich, passed away last night from the effects of Parkinson's. He had it for several years. That and his near total hearing loss had left him feeling isolated in recent years, and his wife, Jean, seems content that he is finally at peace. As many of you will know, he did considerable work for Marvel during the late 1960s and 1970s and for Charlton in the 1960s, including a remembered run on Sergeant Fury, stints on Captain America, Daredevil, S.H.I.E.L.D., and others. And of course, the basic concept creation, which I just told you guys, of the motorcycle riding Ghost Rider at Marvel. I'd known Gary since I was in college, and he's still in high school at the time when he came to work at the Palace Theater in Jackson, Missouri. It's some of my happiest memories of our days in the rock band he founded circa 1962, which lasted a couple years. So uh, really close, really good friends with him. Um, you know, tons of stuff he worked on. And I think he was working on the Hulk at the same time as um, Marie Severin. Like, I think that he was an illustrator and then she was doing the coloring on it at the same time. Um, he won an Inkpot Award in 2007. Um, an Alley Award a couple times for the best war title, Sergeant Fury. And um, he got the um, eBay, <laughs> the Will Eisner Comic Industry uh, Bill Finger Award for Excellence in Comic Writing. And that was about eight years ago. I think that was 2010. So he uh, really left an indelible mark as well on comic book history, comic books themselves, and uh, all of his fans. So huge loss for both of those. But um, did you guys want to say anything about either of those two? Or, you know, did you read anything from them? Did you hear about this? Yep. Heard about both. I mean, definitely big losses. Like, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, comics have been around now for a point where we're going to start losing all those legends, you know, and it's just mm -hmm. going to. It's going to be a little bit rougher. So it's definitely a good time to like look back at their work, you know, and, and really appreciate it as, you know, if you haven't before, this is a good time to, you know, kind of jump back in to dip your toe and what got it all started and got comics to where they are now, what you love, you know? Right. Exactly. You know, it's obviously really sad news, but I think sometimes hearing this and kind of like, you know, the impact that the person had might bring out some curiosity in people to go pick up some old EC stuff, yeah. you know, reprints of it or some mm -hmm. of the old Silver Age stuff, you know, that they might not otherwise have. So, you know, I hope that, you know, that that's kind of like a, a silver lining in the dark cloud that, you know, it might attract some, you know, new people, you know, broadening some folks' horizons, so to speak. So, right. Well, I got to be honest, I wasn't really familiar with either two. Um, I did recall watching a Netflix series talking about the female cre the women creators in comics. I did not finish it, um, but Jesse, I don't know if you watched it or not. If you did, do you know if this woman who passed away is she in it? I'm not sure. Was she mentioned in it? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to find out what it's called and just kind of yeah. let you know. But but yeah, I like watching was, those types of things. So definitely uh, keep yeah. that over to me. I want to check that out. Yeah. yeah. So I think she was the last of the, the EC crew. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Inside joke with Marky. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, yeah. So, you guys, in, in the chat or later in the comments, if you wanted to say something about either of them, you know, books that you liked of theirs, their favorites, anything, just feel free to, you know, write whatever it is. So um, be happy to, you know, post that up, you know, leave it here as well. So, um, all right, cool. So on to some, like, you know, more uplifting stuff. Um, there's been some talk for a while of uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Amazing movie. I love that movie. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Um, but they were talking about doing a reboot for it. And everyone's like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Uh, and it was going to be um, – <laughs> and they were set, talking about um, The Rock. Um, so it turns out that, yes, they are moving forward with it, um, with The Rock, but it's not a reboot. So it's going to be like a whole new new thing in the same world, obviously. Um, kind of more like a sequel, I guess, versus a reboot. So good news, if you ask me. You know, some movies you just shouldn't, like, touch. You know, they're just mm -hmm. you know, loved by people. And I, for me, this is one of those that, like, don't don't screw with it. Just leave it alone, you know. So... Yeah, it was pretty, I don't know, for what it was, it's hard to improve on exactly that one. Um, but as long <laughs> as as long as long Jack's in it, you know, and then the 
Rock could be like his protege or something, whatever. Yeah, that would be fine. I'd be okay with that. But you gotta, you you know, it definitely needs the the nod to the original if you're gonna move forward. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm sure there'll be a lot of like you know, um, like inside jokes or you know from people that have seen that or homages, you know. Um. Yeah, I was on yeah. mute, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry. But yeah, yeah, I mean, there's gotta be you know. Some, you know, accidental way of killing an enemy, things of that sort, you know, just because your boot knife gets stuck or whatever. Such <laughs> <laughs> so a great movie. Talk about low pan. All yeah, right. right. <laughs> exactly. I'm kind of, you know how, I don't know if you guys saw the, the new Ghost Rider movie with the all females. Did you see that? Uh, no. Okay, Ghost Rider? So- no, not Ghostbuster. Uh, Ghostbuster. Oh, Ghostbuster. Yeah, okay. I'm still thinking about um, Frieder. Um, so it, it obviously re- reboot for that all female cast except for the the secretary, um, and they did like the the ghosts obviously you know plasma and stuff, but they had like this like really slick CGI look and it didn't feel at all like um, the original movies. You know how they did the the ghosts and they were kind of like I don't know it was different technology at the time. So I'm kind of worried mm-hmm. that they'll kind of bring that like that over slickness to it with the magic and stuff with like it's a little pan and stuff. Um, I, I hope that they kind of continue with that same feel that they did, you know, with the original movie. You know, because if it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's. I don't know it just feels cheap otherwise, even though it's a lot more expensive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just feels like cheap cash in. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I gotta be honest. I'm not even uh, very convinced with a lot of these actors. Uh, acting skills with some of these uh, CG characters, like the, uh, the Venom, for instance, when when he's holding the guy in the in the little convenience store, it, like just his reaction on his face didn't really look convincing. Didn't match up, right? Uh, yeah, it didn't really. Yeah. 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 So we'll have to see. We'll 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 be following that one for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's kind of been in, in development for a while. So, um, speaking about reboots, and I know Sweet said too many reboots. Um, actually, a couple comments here. Uh, Marky says they could have done so much better with that reboot. Talking about Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. um, says new chapter. Jackio said The Rock only makes sequels or generic movies, but Miss Hustle wasn't having it. She said The Rock makes everything look good. So I had to make sure to say that. Um, that's because she ain't watching nothing but The Rock. <laughs> that's probably right. <laughs> well, he's in everything now. So. <laughs> um, the suite says, too many reboots. Guess whatever happened to originality. Uh, Big Trouble is a little classic. Wait, Big Trouble is a classic that shouldn't have been touched. So, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Manny, we're talking about Big Trouble in Little China um, with The Rock, and um, it's not a reboot. It's more of a sequel. Although it probably may kind of a reboot. Um, talking about reboots, but not really Top Gun. This is not comic related at all, but it is Top Gun, so I got to talk about it because it's a cool movie. Uh, Top Gun Maverick. We just announced that it's pushed back a full year. It was going to come out next summer. It's coming oh, wow. out June of 2020. Dang. So, yeah, and the, the reasoning uh, Paramount made this announcement um, yesterday. They said that they wanted to give the filmmakers an opportunity to kind of figure out. There's a whole lot of like new new planes, new technology. This is going to be have a lot of drones in it and drone tech. Um, uh-huh. Cruise is going to be um, the the flight instructor. So I guess they're instructing drone pilots, which is kind of like you know you're playing Xbox, I guess. Um, so I don't know how that's going to be, but they want to have them figure out like kind of the 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 flight logistics and all that type of stuff for. Um, all this new tech that's out, just obviously to make it relevant, and, you know. And didn't all you right. say Val Kilmer was going to be in this one too? Yep, he's going to be in it. At first, he wasn't. They and then he came out, and uh, you know. Well, that's cool because it gives him time to heal up and probably get in better shape. And because he he's been oh, looking rough, he, he let himself oh, yeah. go, man. Like, yeah. He was, what'd you say? He wasn't bad. No, no, no. I said he, he's in better shape now. Like, oh, like, yeah. He's been he's been working out and stuff like that. Yeah. Nice. We need Iceman back. <laughs> right. I, think, I think honestly, and I'm sorry for being late. Just have <laughs> things going on. Um, I think uh, I, I don't think you need this movie at all. I think I think that you know it's just something where they just like, oh, eighties nostalgia. Let's do it. It's just like yeah, but I I would rather. Not, I mean, I don't want to see it rebooted, but you know, you don't need a sequel to Top Gun. That's Top Gun. I mean, is it? A st- I mean, if you want to do a sequel to it, it had to, it should have been 
you know, a couple of years after, something like that. But yeah, a long time. Ago. All right. It. I mean, as, as much as I love, it, like yeah. I'll say this much: one of my favorite movies of all time. I know they w- were gonna go ahead and do a part two of it and everything, but it doesn't work now, which is Goonies. They were like, "Oh, Goonies, we're gonna do a part two. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, that's like. 20 or uh, 35 years too late, man. Like, oh, how many years? Is it? At least 30 years ago, right? It's like, you no, yeah. you need to do that. Like, if you're going to do a Goonies part two, you need to do it in like 1989. You can't do Goonies part two. Like, well, well, let's bring it up a few decades and talk about Avatar because that's the same damn thing. Like, you know, you've waited. What? When did the last Avatar come out? 2008. Avatar? The only yeah. Avatar? Yeah. Yeah. Ten years ago. Yeah. 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 Just All trying to work on the next one and they're supposed to like be shot all together but 10 years later it's like does anybody care anymore you yeah know? well is it going to be delayed even more just because james cameron's like i don't want to put out a movie with all the superhero hype because he's he's not trying to pour because he wants to get that, that type of budget he wants to get a superhero movie budget and do superhero movie numbers mm-hmm. but he's not trying to sit there and compete with them because he he knows it. like let's put it this way. if he if he puts it out at the same time as the next big marvel movie um he's not gonna make he's not gonna make the money he wants to even if he puts it out in the same year it's still not gonna make the money he wants to yeah in the, in the chat they're, t- they're saying um the goonies also they waited too long for goonies too oh way too long for goonies. Agreed. Uh, agreed but yeah. let me uh ask you guys this i want to ask the chat because you're talking about top gun uh uh-huh. what about that soundtrack man do they still does that soundtrack still hold up do they still go with uh <laughs> right into the danger away. zone no <laughs> No, not that. Oh, way to the <laughs> oh, you, zone. Oh, you were yeah. going for, oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, going yeah, for yeah. the danger zone, man. Oh, it was I a think love story. What are you up. talking about? It was a love story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, all right. Um, I think it does. I mean, that soundtrack's that Kenny Log Was it Kenny Loggins? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's it's <laughs> it's all just pop culture. Everybody knows it. Everybody gets a good feeling from that soundtrack, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you're if you're ever in San Diego, um, last time I was there, I made sure to um, check it out. Um, right on the the street there, where the the convention center is for San Diego Comic Con. If you walk up towards the aircraft carrier on the right, there's like a bunch of grass, and you go down like a few feet. Actually, it's pretty close to the street. That's the bar that they shot in the movie. Um, so if you want to want to go and like. In, and you're in San Diego, I'm like, relive the scene or whatever. Um, that that bar is still open, so it's pretty cool. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Don't he, Brian B. said, aren't we about due for <laughs> Iron Eagle 6? Oh, my God. <laughs> Chappie! <laughs> Chappie! Right. Yeah. Louis Gossett Jr. is what, only about 80 years old now. Oh, my gosh. I love that movie, though, because the kid, he couldn't fly unless he was listening to his cassette player in the jet. <laughs> 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 whatever man okay but okay my little brief take on the top gun thing one yeah real quick just to kind of bring it back into comic books and anime and stuff robotech all right robotech. Oh, yeah, yeah you go you take the story from macross plus which was manned pilot versus drone plane versus guy basic dr- drone plane and you do that story as top gun 2 and it would be amazing <laughs> that's right that would be cool mm-hmm. that's all i'm saying yeah. that's all i'm saying everybody go look up macross plus you know you'll know what i mean i'm not i'm i'm a robotech nerd <laughs> 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 uh, all right cool um <coughs> excuse me so um alec baldwin let's talk about alec baldwin for a minute <laughs> um monday they announced that he would uh, be joining the uh, Joker movie as Thomas Wayne. <laughs> Two days later, <laughs> they come out and say, nope, he's not doing it. Not going to do it, as Dana Carvey would say. Um, and like that, he's out. So in and out, boom, really quick. Um, a lot of people are like, good, he sucks. Some people are like, you know, based on – so. The description for Thomas Wayne, it's kind of like an 80s sort of period piece. A um, couple uh, movie like De Niro's in the movie. So Taxi Driver and that movie with the, the where he was a clown, like an aspiring comedian. Um, those were cited as inspirations for the movie. And the description for Thomas Wayne was like a um, 80s style businessman in the vein of Donald Trump. I mean, was the description. 
and Alec Baldwin, of course, plays Trump on um, Saturday Night Live. So uh, I'm kind of thinking of that, and he would have been kind of perfect for that, um, you know, yeah, this specific he... role. True. I mean, so. the the Martha and Thomas Wayne that we got in, um, well, pff, what movie? What movie was that? Batman versus Superman? Was that where we got him? Yep. Yep. Th- yep. That, I mean, Flashback. yeah, who yeah. that to me was pretty much dead on. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. like so if they went with and anybody that was, else. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Yeah. He, yeah. That would. I mean, to me, that's that's our Flashpoint Batman right there too. Right. But, um, but yeah. So, am I surprised at Alec Baldwin getting kicked out or leaving or whatever? Nah. Yeah. This happened. Yeah. Honestly, this is DC, this is D- DC's mo. In and out. Directors in and out. You know, movies <laughs> in and out. Announcements in and out. Actors yeah. in and out. So yeah, this is just typical. Um, you know, it still brings up the question. Obviously, they wanted Thomas Wayne, somebody of this age, and then the Joker is Joaquin Phoenix in this movie. So obviously, Thomas is still alive. He hasn't been shot, so Bruce would have to be a baby, if not not even born yet. Um, so big age gap there. So the question is, is there going to be a Batman in this? Um, there's a couple of theories. Uh, this Thomas Wayne, like you said, it could be a flashpoint Thomas Wayne where he is Batman, right? Right. Um, so that, that's an interesting <laughs> thought. Um, and then, um, the other thing I was thinking was maybe he's just, there's just no Batman, but it would be cool if they kind of go for that. Like, you know, um, oh, the, the actress that's going to play his mother. And I forget what they called, um, what her name is, uh, but she was in a um, bun- bunch of movies. She was like the the crazy cat lady in Catwoman. Um, I forget her name. She was Sharon in um, American Horror Story. No. Um, oh. Frances Conroy, maybe? Frances um, McDermott? No, I think it's Frances Conroy. She's like really good at like playing old crazy old ladies. <laughs> oh. Anyways, um, what if... Uh, bear with me, crazy theory. What if, um, and keeping in mind the description for Thomas Wayne, crazy like 80s playboy businessman, right? What do they do? Fast cars, money, women. To- so what if Thomas Wayne was sleeping around with this lady? They had a he had a mistress who had a kid, and the kid is the Joker. So, like, um, the Joker is like, um, the illegitimate. Um, child for Thomas Wayne, and that's how he develops his hatred and jealousy and all that for mm. for Batman later on. Maybe that's that's pretty far as, as far as stretched in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it'd be maybe. it'd be interesting, but you're pretty, you're changing <laughs> everything. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. You're whoa, you're messing with a ton of Batman stuff. Yeah, it's like the idea. That, that's exactly what they Wayne, say they're you know? doing with this movie. Is taking a lot of liberties with the story. This is completely outside of it, all the DCU stuff. This is a completely removed, almost an Elseworlds type story. Man, you so want to talk is... about backlash? <laughs> I know, right? You want to talk about fan? Oh my God. Like Star out. Wars all over again? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It'd be like saying that Jonathan Kent was an adulterer or something. You know, mm-hmm. like people would lose their minds. Mm-hmm. That's just not what those characters are. They were, you know, they're held up in in in, in these high positions to be looked up to and stuff. So. I don't know. I don't know. Weird, if you ask me. I mean, (laughs) it is, and and this is the like Scorsese, you know, involved. I I guess you can call it movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. That 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 just. I don't know, man. I don't know. I I just I just have to wonder, like, why you go so far off. I mean, I guess you know they're not necessarily, you know. DCEU, you know, normal, I guess, just a normal course and plan of, of what they would go with. But, I mean, it's it's a theory. And honestly, like, with DC movies being what they are and as crazy as they are and how this one's not really associated with the main universe, mm-hmm. I could see it, I guess. It, it would just, I'm with Justin. I feel like people would just be like, oh. I mean, Ma- Martha Wayne, why, why would you do that to Martha? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, just, it just seems like to make her go that outside of normal character even though i mean she wasn't everybody has their own perception of who she is and they look at her as you know loving mother and then you know ultimate victim it's just like i don't know man i don't know (laughs) yeah 
Uh, yeah, I, don't know. I will. I will say this though: if that is the story, if that's what they're doing with Thomas Wayne, I will not see that movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying well, to think of how to make it work without a Batman in it. You know, how do you do a Joker movie without Batman? Because the Joker didn't become Joker the Joker. Movie, no, well, the yeah. Joker did not become the Joker until he saw Batman. He was the Red Hood. So what do they call this movie then? They don't exactly. Like what do you do? The Joker, <laughs> it, he, yeah. the Joker did not exist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Right now for this movie, I'm not excited at all about it, but I'm super uh, curious about what they're trying to do. Because it's like this is this is kind of a risky move, you know, especially given the reception of the last few movies and like, you know, you think that they would just go kind of back to what what their, their core and the basics and just kind of like restart from there, but no, they're still trying to like branch out into these like risky areas. So it's an interesting strategy. So I'm like I'm, I'm curious about it, you know. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I just. I want to be excited for it just because it's yeah. a easy thing. And I think that, you know, I mean, given, given it makes me wonder, I mean, I know he's attached, but he's not the actual director. So I don't know. I mean, it, it just sounds really just, it, it really sounds like thrown together. It doesn't really sound like anything solid right now. And, um, you know, I, I just have a feeling that that's when you just have to go ahead and wait and see and, and really just, you know, hear all the details about before you really make a judgment because mm-hmm. I mean, th- th- this could, f- from the way it sounds now, it's straight to DVD. I, I don't, I don't see this as yeah. even hitting theaters. It. it just sounds weird. Just like put you it on the, the streaming the service. That you have involved. De Niro's in it. Great. You think De Niro's never made a bad movie? Come on now. You know what I mean? Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> like that doesn't make me happy. I mean, it's not Jared Leto, but I mean, <laughs> Joaquin yeah. Phoenix. I mean. Right. I don't know. What, what was the last movie? The one where he's like in love with a computer? He oh, yeah. With ScarJo. Walk the Line was his last good movie? What? Her? I just said, <laughs> what was the last movie? Signs? So was that like 15 years? Oh, signs, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I, like, I feel like, I feel like, you know, someone needs to kind of step in and really, like, you know, understand what this product's about before they sit there and be like, yeah, let's throw a lot of money behind it. Like, no, no, no. Let's yeah. figure out what we're going to do here first. Yeah. And I heard that this is going to be a pretty dark movie. So, yeah. you know, we've always been like, oh, they're going to the lighter stuff, the Wonder Woman and the fun and the Aquaman and blah, blah, blah. They're going back. To, they're still doing their dark thing, even though Snyder is not around. So I don't know. Why would yeah. you want Why would you want to do any of those characters without having Batman in the movie? Why? Yeah. Why? You know, that's the whole point of all of those characters is Batman. Exactly. We just want Batman, you know. And it's crazy because you know, for Batman's story to start, Thomas Wayne has to die, you know, and yeah. he's like a huge thing for this. And the only way to do it otherwise is like the flashpoint kind of thing, you know, which I doubt they're gonna do. So, you know, I don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just, yeah. Uh, it just seems like a weird one, but you know, I guess uh, you, you gotta wait for more details to emerge that are solid because it just sounds like a lot of you know, just a lot of the spaghetti at the wall right now. So it's just like you yep. to figure out what actually is happening and then go from there. Exactly. Yeah. I can't even let, like lock in an actor for more than two days. <laughs> yep. You know, exactly. I don't know why he left. He just decided not to do it. I don't know. Um, I, mean, <laughs> maybe I, I don't know. I don't know. If the, uh, I, I don't really don't know if the whole comparison to Trump was the thing that like got him. Who knows? I mean, maybe. Well, he has fun doing it on SNL. Like he loves being. Well, yeah, you know, you, you that's... Know, I think I think I don't I don't think that's necessarily what did it. I, I just think that you know, the guy in his own right is just uh, not. I mean, maybe he just he, like he's got the same reservations we do. And he's like, yeah, this doesn't sound good. I'm sorry, like I can't mess with it. Yeah. Tell you what, though, they have um, Zazie Beats uh, locked in for this movie. Maybe maybe this movie Zazie takes Beats, place. Yeah. In the dark universe. What movie? Another Deadpool movie? Nah, Zazie Beats is in the Joker movie. Oh, she is? Mm-hmm. What, what role does she have in that movie? I don't think it's uh, revealed what her what her oh, okay. character will be. That'd be cool if she did like a different Harley. Nah, then I gotta mess with Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie got that locked up. 
<laughs> like, they're not gonna they're not gonna change that. Is, yeah. I mean, yeah, but when are they gonna capitalize on that? I know, um, right? They should have been did something with her. Like, yeah, that movie. The thing is, I mean, they, they don't know. Uh, I mean, Suicide Squad didn't really pan out. Oh, you say it. So, what? <laughs> I thought Squad, Suicide Squad was awesome. Suicide Squad should have been better than what it was, and uh, you know, but as far as her role in it, like she did a really good job. I can say that much. Um, I think that I think that they just kind of. I mean, I, I don't know what they're waiting on for her, just because. I mean, I'm not saying that you just pepper into every single movie, but like you know, when you have someone who's done the role that well and is you know a big name actress like Michael Robbie, you got to put her in something else. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, I just quick quick shout out, quick plug for Edwin. We got a whole bunch of more people in here. Edwin's got a a raffle going on, on his Instagram. He's only got four spots left. Everybody, watch roll. Anybody's on. interested. I only got four spots left. Please, I want to fill this up. <laughs> Let's do it. We got that filled up tonight. Come on, yeah. people. IG strictly comics with an X. IG. Let's get that locked up. Thanks. The, the X is for extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Liefeld. That's right. Yeah. So I kind of mentioned um, Zazie Beats on purpose. Um, bit of a bit of a bridge to the next topic uh we all we've known for a while that disney has ha- been having their streaming service on the way right yeah. finally got a name for it it's called disney play i'm supposed to be launching sometime next year and it's funny they announced it disney likes to do this like they know that dc is going to do something whether it's a movie um like a movie will drop and then like a week before that they'll decide to drop like a, a whole season on netflix or you know what i mean um so <laughs> A couple days before the DC stuff, which we're going to talk about in a second that we learned last night um, about like Titans and stuff, cool stuff, um, they announced it's called Disney Play. Um, so there's a couple things that make me kind of concerned there. They have uh, an issue with TBS right now with the Star Wars stuff. Um, mm. Star uh, TBS has, I think it's locked in until 2024, um, rights for cable and for online. Oh, wow. Yeah. So wow. they're trying to buy back the rights for that. They want to just be able to obviously have the freedom to play what they want when they want on their own service. Um, but because of those rights, they may not be able to put all the Star Wars stuff up right away. So, mm. yeah. So they're dealing with that. We got a um, price estimate. They said it's going to be anywhere from $8 to $14, um, which would make it, uh, if it's $8, one penny more than the, the monthly for DC Universe for their streaming service. You already know, man, with Disney, everything is expensive. Yeah. But here's the other thing, and this is why I mentioned um, Zazie Beats, um, Deadpool, R-rated, right? Can't put it on there. They're not putting any R-rated content on Disney Hmm. Play. I They're putting that all on Hulu. Mm. Yeah. Hulu is like in this huge thing they lost in Q2, like over $300 million. Like they own, well, now that they have Fox, they own 60% of it. So that's like kind of an investment thing for them. So I guess by putting all the R rated stuff on Hulu, they're hoping to kind of turn that ship around a little bit. You know what I mean? Wow. So, yeah. Kind of a um, but no Star Wars and no like R rated stuff. I- I'm not probably going to jump on that Disney play right away until those things are figured uh-huh. out, you know? So that that's my take on it. I don't know what you guys want to say. Um, let's see. So no style. Like I had a feeling with style was as soon as you said TBS, I was like, oh, I, I get it. Cause every yeah. time, every <laughs> time. few months you turn on um, TNT, like they, they play, you know, one trilogy or the other, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's the prequels, whether it's the, uh, yeah. whether it's the, you know, regular trilogy. And, um, you know, it's been that way for a long, long time. So uh, the only thing that I wish, or that I only wish for it, the only hope I have for it, is that they do not put the, um, you know, the new version of the original trilogy up there. They actually get, you know, the regular trilogy up because, like, that that new version of it with all the extra foolish shit just kills me every time I see it. I can't see, like, especially Return of the Jedi. As soon as I, uh, they start singing and everything, I'm like, nope, nope. Mm-hmm. I turn it off every single time. Um, you know and, that fart thing in Return of the Jedi at the beginning. Oh no, it was a belch, not a fart. Yeah, remember that? 
when they're outside of Jabba and if the, the camera pans out in the desert and there's like a creature and it just goes, Bleh. yeah, <laughs> why? why? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I just, you know, like George Lucas's last vision of those films is, is stupid. So I, yeah. that's not the, that's not what I want to see on the Disney streaming. But, you know, I, I want I, I want the theatrical release version. That's what yeah. I, Which yeah. George Lucas claimed is destroyed in the fire and never again and all that. Sure stuff. Yeah, see. sure it is. But, um. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, I know for me, um, when it comes out, like m- my wife would would be into it just because all the Disney movies are in one place. Um, so it's just like you know stuff for my daughter and everything like that, and then movies that she likes that she grew up with and everything. So um, it's not really like I-, I would say that it's not quite as for me uh, a downer that that stuff's not on there. Um, I mean, it'll give me something to look forward to as it does. But again, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to jump right on the the exact you know release date um, because I mean, it's just something that like I don't think my wife even really knows about it yet. So it's kind of cool, <laughs> you know. So I have to worry so much about it. But you know, <laughs> I just I just think about it where it's just like you know it would be cool to have that stuff. I, I don't see the hours <laughs> really going on the Disney at all. Um, just just for the mere fact that like they they don't do that. I mean, they produce. A lot of stuff that you wouldn't think, but um, that there's a lot of things that like will never make it to Disney, um, that they've made that you know it is too I guess graphic for the family demographic. So, um, and it's not that that's not a deal breaker for me. I mean, you know, so we'll see. I don't know if I want to wait. Was it six years now to get to to the Star Wars stuff though? To 2024. Yeah, that's a long. That's I mean. Everybody well, should if, have. If they can't work out a deal, that's if yeah, they can't, if work, they out can't deal. work out a deal. I mean, yeah. well, that's just for the cable rights for the actual movie, right? That's not for like them to produce their own television show, though. Yeah, they're 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 doing their own content. They have the um yeah. the show that they're doing for it. Um, so, what's his right, name? So, the guy, so, the guy, so Favro. Yeah, it's not it's not quite like no Star Wars whatsoever. It's just you know no old stuff, I guess. Yeah, or nothing that reaches cable. Um, you know. Gets to come on the network for a few years. So Play what I am gonna get though. Uh-oh. Pretty quick. Yep. Pretty quick. Yep. DC Universe. So we learned a lot about this yesterday. That was a good live stream. Yes, it was cool until the whole chat went to hell. Yeah, that was crap. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there. Just like an invasion of um, bad people. Yeah. Um, talking about something that Robbie Rodriguez did that he probably shouldn't have done, but we won't talk about it here. Um, just Google um, Robbie Rodriguez, Ethan Van Skyver, yep. if you want to, and you'll know what we're talking about, but we're not. That's not what this is about. This is about DC Universe. Uh, comes out in two weeks, September 15th, right? Whole thing launches. So um, uh, Justin was watching it. I was watching it. I don't know if you guys watched it, um, but it was a pretty cool broadcast hosted by. Uh, Kevin Smith was there. Uh, Tiffany Smith was there. Jim Lee was there. Um, a few Quinn other people. Yeah, Harley Quinn Smith. Who they announced? Uh, they have a. They're gonna have a show called DC Daily. Not as good as this show, but it'll still be pretty cool. Um, and she's gonna be part of that. Um, they, they said she's gonna be um, host for that. One of the hosts. So that's pretty cool. Um, in the back, they had the the um, the bat missile. Pretty badass, you know. Batmobile looking things. Um, so, yeah. So, um, we learned um, that uh, Titans is coming out in October, middle of October, right? Um, and I guess we'll learn more um, at New York Comic Con. Um, so, there's that. And uh, what was the other thing? Oh, Titans. They showed a really cool um, scene um, from Young Justice, actually. I'm sorry, Young Justice. I mean, Nightwing, um, really good look at Nightwing. Um, and Oracle was kind of like in, in his ear. And the whole, the, the setup for it was that Nightwing um, was in Markovia, which is in Europe. Um, they're not sanctioned to do their operations. Like, so this was an unsanctioned mission. And they were, he was going over, he was in his warehouse, and they were rescuing uh, metahumans that was part of like this trafficking thing. And there was all these like metahumans in boxes, and he was just there. And pretty cool. Sounds pretty like, um, you know, pretty pretty cool. If he asked me. Um, so, oh, so the price for this, uh, it's going to be seven ninety nine a month. We knew this already. Uh, if you pre order, so you have two weeks to pre order. 
$74.99 a month. That'll be the annual price, but, and I'm not trying to sell this. I'm just relaying the information. Um, if you do that pre-order, you do get uh, three months free on top of that. And then after know. that, regular, it's it's seventy four ninety nine a month. And what they're so gonna do the, is stagger them. It's gonna come out in like an episodic format, not a Netflix, um, you know, dump. Oh, wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So if you pre order, you get fifteen months. Correct. Nice. Yep. That's only I, if you pre order. Yeah. I, I get the feeling though, so many people are just waiting back and waiting to get reviews and reactions from other people before they commit to somebody smoking but smoking up never mind i heard a letter <laughs> yeah <laughs> like like in blaze on the show or something um <laughs> but that's just the feeling that i get uh and i, I could see that on the panel uh, i think jesse did you sign up for it did you uh commit to the uh the year-long subscription so monthly I'm, is uh, Manny. Monthly is seven ninety nine. The year is seven seventy four ninety nine. So just wanted to clear that up. I'm gonna but, pre-order it. <coughs> are you? I yeah. know Sleepy Reader did. He 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 put that on Twitter. He's like it, it was an impulse impulse purchase, and he went ahead and committed to the to the whole year. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Just for the sheer fact of like the stuff they've announced, like the animated series and stuff, like I want to see season three Young Justice. Like mm-hmm. I'm in for that. Like we're gonna have access to comics. I'm in for that. Like yeah. you know, we get Wonder Woman, we get the old Batman show, we get all the old shows too. So Linda Carter in HD. Dude, that was so awesome. Like in between little like sections of that live stream, they were showing you know, like uh, her beating up a whole bunch of guys and stuff. You know, it was just was like stuff you just haven't seen in a while. And it was just really cool. Yeah. One thing I would like to see on there, and I, I didn't see any type of like clip or whatever for it, is the um, the Shazam show from the mm. 70s. Yes. Mm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. I've only ever seen like maybe two episodes of that. I mean, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's the 70s. It's <laughs> campy and weird and yeah. corny, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, come on. It's everything you'd expect a 70s superhero show to be. Exactly. But it's, but it's fun. Yep. Yeah. It'll be in HD. The fact um, that they made a Shazam, a Shazam show was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a quick question for you guys because I don't know if we answered this before, but um, does that also mean that all WB Warner Brothers films of all time are going to be on there as well? No, 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 Warner Brothers. Or is it um, just DC stuff? DC. Just DC. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they're not doing the CW shows, I believe. However, on the DC Daily Show, they will be discussing it and like, you know, talking about it on there. In fact, they had uh, John Barrowman on last night. It'll happen eventually. They'll transition over. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm also hope, kind of hopeful that DC Universe is successful. And then yeah. that, that forces Marvel or Disney, whoever, to expand Marvel Unlimited. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and kind of mirror this because it'll be direct competition, if not, mm-hmm. you know, killing it just because you have so much more content than just the comics. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That, it kind of makes too much sense, like pairing up Unlimited with, with the Disney thing. So, like, why? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it really does. It really does because. I don't know. It's different content, you know? Yeah. Or you're pulling at a different audience, trying to anyway. Yeah. I think, uh, f- go ahead. I think, I think Murph is kind of hitting the nail on the head, like with, uh, Smallville? you know, not just Smallville, but, um, you know, even the Batman from 1966 and just all the, like, even, mm. uh, Lois and Clark with Dean King. Yes. And all <laughs> yeah. the nostalgic 90s goodness right there. Yeah. Awesome. Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be pretty cool. I'm not entirely looking forward to the um the Titan show, but I, I am I don't think we've really gotten anything about um the, the swamp thing show yet. Yeah, no, Which, I haven't. Go ahead. Yeah, I so the only thing I really know about it is it's live action and it's not connecting to the other shows which are gonna be kind of springboards like Titans is uh the springboard for the other stuff. Um, and then Swamp Thing is just going to be kind of a, a separate thing. Um, 
I don't know. Hey, I wonder if we're going to get the Swamp Thing stuff. Remember that show? The movie? The movie, I mean, yeah. 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 There were two movies. Oh, I don't know. I, I remember, the, yeah. I remember yeah. that one at the end, the girl has a flower to grow out of her foot. Oh, yeah. No, well, my favorite part is when he just regrows his arm. I haven't seen that in the social. I remember they, they used to, they used to actually time. be a Swamp Thing show, too. He like yeah he was like he was trapped like they had him chained in like a basement or something and like so there's no sunlight but like he stretches his hand up and he touches the sunbeams and then his other arm grows it's really awesome <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> swamp thing dun, dun, dun. swamp thing so um yeah well, that that looks pretty cool this is the one I'm going for uh, Disney Play sorry guys waiting on you guys so. <laughs> um, I think we're kind of all in agreement there. And plus it comes out uh, much sooner. It comes out in a couple weeks versus right. next year. So. Um, okay, so we got a couple announcements about uh, Star Wars Episode Nine. It's in filming. It's underway. Um, Matt Smith from Doctor Who um, is part of the cast. They haven't revealed who he is, um, but he kind of looks like a, like a First Order officer to me. Um, so he's on there. Um, that's interesting. And um, what was the other thing I was going to say about Star Wars? Shit, I forgot. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I think. Tell me about Matt Smith. I like Matt Smith as the doctor. I haven't seen Matt Smith as much of anything else. Yeah. So for him for him to play a not good guy would be weird for me. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea who he is. So, I mean, uh, as far as uh, I know he's a Doctor Who, but I never watched the show. So, I mean... I won't have a problem. Like for me, it'll be my first time actually watching him in anything. Um, so if he's evil, it's not. It's not going to be hard. As a, you know, if you watch him as a doctor, um, I guess that could be kind of tough. I want to say he's the same guy that was. Um, he actually no, I'm sorry. I have seen him in something evil before. He was in Harry Potter. He was uh, body crouch. Was he? Yeah, uh, yeah, the last hmm. one or whatever. The uh, hmm. the um, like Goblet of Fire. I think it was. Mm, yeah, he was younger then. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I remember he was oh. Body Crouch Jr. Yeah. I remember what I was going to say. What? Um, so they're going to have this whole thing, like part of the premise, and this is a rumor. And spoiler alert, let me just say that up front. Um, with Leia, like the big thing is about kind of rallying up, you know, a new rebellion, you know, from the ashes. Mm-hmm. One of the things that they reach out to, the clans or whatever, the planets, is um she reaches out to the huts and they call her they call her the hut slayer because she killed java mm-hmm. um yeah so that they're and that's established in canon it was in a book um so yeah the hut slayer is coming so i thought that was pretty cool um yeah so they're gonna have that and i guess it's gonna be um her and um what's his name lando kind of doing that little adventure how are they gonna do that just full cgi I don't know. So she but... already filmed a bunch of scenes. Oh, okay. And I guess they're gonna, I guess, shoehorn those in. Yeah, she's she filmed them for the Force Awakens, mm. like, and they cut them all out. So they're gonna be using a bunch of those. Um, so now instead of saying Slave Leia, which Disney doesn't like, um, now they can call her the Hut Slayer. Which sounds almost cool. too R rated. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One of the guys like Slave Leia. You don't like Slave Leia? No, I think I think the guys like Take Slave that Leia better. Oh, yeah. Like whenever she's in her slave outfit, half naked, that's usually the the sellers, the ones that go first. That yeah, that's iconic. So yeah, at this point, yeah, yeah. And we're gonna see um, like the first order planet, which I guess is like a water planet. So new planets and stuff, which they like to do. So. Um, I don't. There was a couple other things I was gonna tell you guys about uh, for Star Wars. Don't remember them, so guess that's it for that segment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll come back to you if it was important. You know what? I'm gonna hit end broadcast and then I'll remember. Oh, okay. That's what usually <laughs> happens with me. There's always something that I remember afterwards. I'm like, Damn oh yeah. It. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jackie O said, "I wish they would have cut out all that horrible casino planet crap." Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, Jackie, he also said, as long as Ryan Johnson has zero involvement. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. <laughs> um, and then, okay, Venom, first host. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, first host momentarily. Um, and I guess 
did Murph leave? No. I think you also got to mention that. Um, oh no, I you just saying. I don't know if you've done it already, but uh, they're they're making Star Wars Episode Nine a two parter. Just a no, reminder. Oh, they're not. I didn't know that. Are you serious? Yeah, I didn't know that, dude. Yeah, it's gonna be a two parter, dude. Oh. They got to clean up all the crap that they did in uh, the Last Jedi. Uh, I'm disappointed. I thought you guys knew that. No. Yep. So oh, I don't know if it's going to be like two movies, uh, one each year, or if they're going to wait a whole another two years to do the second part. But they that's uh, that's do what like the, was. Uh, they should do like the Matrix and release it like six months later. Yeah, mm. that'd be cool. Yeah. I remember they did that also with the Scream movies. I think Scream Two and came right out not not long after Scream One. Mm-hmm. Done a few times. You got that yeah. with Twilight or something like that too, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, mm-hmm. all right, that's that's, lazy. that's just laziness. Is that a rumor though, or is that confirmed? Uh, let me Do check you know? again. That that's okay. I'll check. Okay, um, okay. So while you're checking, talking about two movies. Um, Wesley Snipes revealed he's in talks, has been in talks for a while with Marvel to work on more stuff, work on more Blade pop potentially. Um, talking about maybe a couple more Blade projects that are in the works. So that's pretty exciting. I, I like Blade. Um, Snipes is a pretty badass martial artist. Um, yeah, Blade. I think a lot of people would want some Blade and what that might lead to, you know. Um, where do you go with Blade? Obviously, they like building franchises, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we get like, um, what do they call it? Midnight Suns. You know, Blade could be in that. You know, it could be uh, teaming up with Moon Knight, maybe, you know, down the road. Um, I, want, I want some Moon Knight. Yeah. That would be I good. I definitely want some Moon Knight, yeah. But... Oh, yeah. I mean, if they're gonna if they're gonna reprise or bring back a Blade movie, or Blade in a movie, or something like that, I mean, Wesley Snipes really hasn't aged, so he could still just be Blade, and I think it would be fun. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, like I said off air, I'm sure he's you know, nice paycheck from Disney would make everybody happy. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but, you know he stays in shape. So I oh mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, I mean, it would be the same. I got to interrupt. Go ahead. Screen Rant. I, I follow Screen Rant. Um, Star Wars 9's two part movie rumor is a lie. <gasps> okay. Edwin was lied to. Edwin, you sit on a hey, throne of lies. Hey, I just said this. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> settle down, settle down. Yeah. So <laughs> um, it, it says uh, this was August 10th, <laughs> so pretty recently. The rumor suggesting episode 9 will be split into two parts is not true. Additionally, that would be the wrong move for the film, even if it had some semblance of truth. As difficult as this is to believe, Lucasfilm is almost at the end of the sequel trilogy. Less than three years out, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it'll be in 2019, signaling the end of an era, and uh, it's one movie. I'll tell you what, if that's only going to be one film, that's going to be a long film. Yeah. It's got to be like three hours long. Three hours long. Um, the theory of episode nine becoming a two-parter seems to have originated in a YouTube video from Mike Zero posted back in July of 2018. Gained more traction thanks to some of the other sites, you know, uh, kind of like reblogging that. Um, and kind of like you said, a long movie. So kind of like pairing that together was like, well, maybe they should split it up instead of doing like a three, three and a half hour movie. Um so they reached out to Disney for comment and nothing. And then they say, okay, frankly, there's nothing substantial to validate the claims. Zero is a notorious Star Wars commentator who often repurposes fan theories as scoops. So there you go. Debunked. <laughs> Which I'm happy about, right? We don't want an episode 9.2. No. You gotta do it all in one pot. Like that. That's just craziness. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Um, so Edwin, I know you like Blade. Um, what do you think about Blade? Happy about that talk, that news? I know you were talking about it before. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to see. Uh, uh, you know, if this is true, Wesley Snipes coming back. Um, I think he, I think he could still do it. I think he's in shape to do it. I think a lot of fans want him to do it. 
Um, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't even see the last Blade film that they that they made with uh, this uh, unknown actor. I don't even some sticky fingers. I don't know his name. Sticky fingers, a rapper. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so been, been tiny tempo. Wait, what are you talking about? There was another Blade movie after yeah, they, trilogy. Wasn't it? Was it a TV Runner? series or a TV series? Yeah. Was that Showtime or something like that? No, I think it was sci-fi. But anyways, I, I would love to see it, and I would love to see him go to Wakanda and either fight oh, with Black Panther fingers. or team yeah, up with right. him. Yeah, Dang. I blocked yeah. that out of my mind. I guess, jeez. <laughs> yeah, Kirk, stick your fingers, Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think he needs to go to Wakanda. That wouldn't work. <laughs> but here, no, here, I'm just saying, just across that that would be cool. At least uh, with Morbius and Ghost Rider, maybe. I just no, I, I want I want Namor to go to Wakanda. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that would be an That's awesome. That's I want to do it. Uh, but my question was, wait, where was I going with this? I, I really do think that um, at some point you're going to see, uh, you know, the the actual oh, yeah. like, like like leaders of the world, you know, different areas of the world get together um, mm-hmm. in, in the Marvel universe. Like, like I, I could definitely see, um, like what happened Spike. in X Men Red number one. It's on Spike, guys. Originally, uh, yeah, Spike. I'm sorry. Yeah, Mikey said it. Yeah. Um, I could see that. I could see that happening, where they would bring those two together. So, um, so here's my question though: If they're talking to Wesley Snipes and they're thinking about bringing him back, you think they're talking to Thomas Jane about coming back, being the Punisher? Oh man, might as well have Dolph come back then too. Hey, <laughs> three Punishers. You got three you Jokers. Why not three Punishers? Um, I don't know. Thomas Jane was pretty cool. Did you see that? Um, that laundry short film. Day. Yeah, Laundry Day. Yeah, that was pretty. That cool. was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he did have a couple of those, a few of those. Yeah, I mean, he, of the three Punishers that we've had, he was my favorite. Yeah. Ray Stevenson was was cool. The movie itself was bad. Mm-hmm. But I remember coming out of that um, Punisher Warzone movie, like I, I literally said, and I, and I could take a lot of violence when I came out of that movie. I said, holy shit, that was violent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was vicious. That was my takeaway from that movie. <laughs> I, I, I say like um, I think that it's a good thing to have Blade. Um, you know, if he wants to come back as Blade, uh, what's his types? Um, I think that yeah. he did a really good job. And I mean, as, as much as you know, he's not you know modern. I guess, I guess the current wave of Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, you know, starting with Iron Man, had nothing to do with him. But I, I, and I've said it a long time ago. You know what I mean, because this predates. Dark Knight and all that stuff. Like, like his was, I think, the best. Um, you know, I think the best, well, most well done comic book movie that was out there at the time. I mean, it, it, and it really set the stage for what could be done in comic book movies. Um, mm-hmm. Just showing that, like, you know, you didn't have to always have, you know, kind of a campy way about you. You could actually have, you know, a serious movie. Now, what they did with it, they, you know, went way too far off because I think that somebody decided that, you know. <laughs> We can really like make these stories, you know, crazy and this, and they just shouldn't have. But the first Blade movie is actually a very solid movie, very good mm-hmm. movie. Right, um, right. But you got to remember when it came out, it was coming on the heels of like Interview with the Vampire and everything like that. So Vampires was the key part about that, not the comic book part. Oh yeah, no, I know, and, and that was the thing, like, because there was so many people that were shocked when they found out it was a comic book movie. They were just like, oh my god, mm-hmm. like, you know, what, what's going on with this? I'm like, you don't know. You know he's a co- you know he's from the comics and like oh really, um so and, and I think it's kind of a good thing that it was disassociated in that way as well just because, um you know, I think I mean people now will associate it with no problem but those two sequels don't have to be associated with comic because they were associated with comic books at the time, it was just like you know oh you know we're just gonna have Blade go this route and he's gonna have a team and all and it's like he doesn't need a team like he's never been you know someone who has to have a team and all the rest of it and then they change vampires around and then it started turning dogs into vampires and they they're basically they're like predator vampires like they didn't have real mouths anymore like the mouths yeah. opened up the man the, the mandible jaw thing yeah it was really mm-hmm. strange they're like yeah because i remember the um the behind the scenes and they're like we're going to take vampires to a different level like why should they all be the same let's be innovative let's do something cool it's just like no let's not because that's just it was like a, a cat system among the vampires yeah yeah mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that was weird. But I mean, we need different vampires. You've got vampires, and then you've got this one guy who can walk in the daylight. There's your difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, and also keep in mind that he still ages like a regular human, so he doesn't have to maintain his uh, eternal youth. So he could still kind of look a little aged mm-hmm. on the screen. Yeah, yep. I, th- I think mm-hmm. that I think that that was part of the thing was that um, a part of the, the um, thought behind it was that. The reason you need these different kinds of vampires is because if you just had regular vampires, he would just plow through them just because, like, I mean, he can just show up yeah. in the daytime while they're all sleeping and just stake them all. You know, no, that's no. the end of the movie. But yeah. the, that's the thing. Like, you know, they had to, that's where they kind of lost um, their way as far as storytelling goes because it's like, I mean, you can go back to all these other movies where it's like, you know, varying levels of power depending on, you know, who, you know, the, the level in the vampire hierarchy and all that crap. So, um, in short, in short, I'm excited for it to come back. I think it's going to be cool. Um, I just don't, I, I honestly don't want to see him mix with the regular, um, cinematic universe just yet. I want to see like what they do, you know, where they take it into a horror vibe and, and kind of have that, yeah. be, you know, just the next extension of where the DC movie, I'm sorry. Yeah. Where the, uh, Marvel movies go. Um, yeah. cause what's the point of having a guy come around killing vampires if Thanos can just come up and. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. You know, Blade might not even be around. He might get snapped out of existence. The snapping happens. That's right. <laughs> so, but no, that's um, cool because it opens the door for like Werewolf by Night, and and then you know that kind of helps out. I guess the Morbius movie in a way, <laughs> not, not not really, but yeah. it kind of does. I mean, it's just like okay, I I can at least stomach this a little better than you know. Just a Morbius standalone movie with nothing to really back well, it up. So. Yeah, but then then Morbius has to be a normal vampire, not an energy vampire. Yeah, right. like because then that would just be like Blade would show up and be like, "Wait, what are you? Do I kill you? Do I not kill you? Mm, I think I'm supposed to kill you anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just kill you to be safe." <laughs> yeah. Um, talking about killing people. Uh oh. I know oh. um, Edwin will like this because of his book. Um, Greg Nicotero, very much into uh, The Walking Dead, right? Um, a lot of people love his designs, his character design, a lot of practical effects for the zombies and stuff. Really cool. Todd McFarlane made an announcement earlier this week that Nicotero is now on Spawn with him. He's going to be designing the new costume, um, keeping the budget, trying to keep the budget low. They're going to be kind of leaning heavily on practical effects and that type of stuff. So um, if they're going to be doing that, I think that's a really awesome get, so to speak, uh, Greg Nicotero. Um, really good. Cool. So that was – the he said it was teasing for a while. Oh, big announcement, big announcement. That's what the announcement was. Um, you can see a video of him. A couple pictures, too, where they're just chilling together, him and Greg. So, yes. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I think it was a good announcement. I mean, everybody knows him from The Walking Dead. Um, right. I think they know. I think his name is more of a household name than it was before because of The Walking Dead. I don't think a lot of people knew him very well prior to that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll be it, honest, that's that's me. I didn't know about him much yeah. before that. But it definitely has me curious about where Todd is going with this whole Spawn thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Practical effects is cool. Being cheap is cool. I want to see more practical effects. I think they should do more of that in uh, the newest new Star Wars films and all these other films. But um, I don't know. It might be good. It might be. It, it's going to yeah. also be weird to see how Jamie Foxx is going to be dressed up if right. uh, if he's involved. Yeah, and the fact that they have Nicotero on, they're they're designing the suit, they're investing in that, um, gives me a little bit more confidence because up to this point, we've been led to believe that. Um, Spawn will just kind of like be in the shadows. We don't really hardly ever see him. Mm-hmm. So this kind of tells me that we're going to see a bit more of him than I was thinking we were going to. So that's cool to me. Yeah. Or do we get some Violator or, you know, yeah. you know, Violator is very grotesque and very demonic and dead, dead looking. They should bring um, Leguizamo back for him. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought he was so I so agree. <laughs> Is, is crazy gay. Um, Knights of Old, Chris, he's asking, does Newbury Comics still exist? Yeah, it does. It's uh, When it's, I was there, they pretty much only sold um, CDs and vinyl. Yeah. And there was like a little wall in the back 
Yep, it was just kind of comics and magazines. Like, the comics weren't comic. Yeah, Newberry Comics has definitely come under a change as far as um, change with the times, basically, just because I mean, uh, 90s it was mostly almost exclusively, um, you know, entertainment. So it was just like, you know, you had CDs and uh, yeah. movies, you know, VHS and stuff like that, and then DVDs eventually. Um, but now they've come back. They've uh, gotten back to getting a lot of comics in the store. Um, unfortunately, no back issues. It's all new stuff. But, mm. um, yeah, it still exists. Yeah. It's, it looks a lot different. They, they've gone ahead and tried to, like, they, they spruce it up from being kind of like your regular mall, just CD shop to being like, oh, this is, like, pop culture everywhere. So it's it's, it's a different whole, like, vibe than what I grew up with going to. And it's just like, oh, I'm going to go grab some CDs for seven ninety nine mm. over here because, you know, you could get them. But cheaper, um, just to see that have crazy sales in the CDs and everything, um, yeah. you know, just such a fun time, uh, you know, really great store. I'm glad it's still around just because, you know, kind of now it's a, like one stop shop for everything. But you know, yeah. and they still do the uh, the store exclusives, right? I've ordered a couple from their website. I think the last one I got was um, the Deadpool. Tom Rainey did a cover with Deadpool. You know, there's um, in the park. No, in the park. Excuse oh, me. Oh man. There's that horse, you know, near that little pond with the the ducks in it and stuff. Yep. There's like a statue there. So they had a variant cover with Deadpool sitting on that, and he had like the hat up, three corner. The, the duck boats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the swans. Swans. The swans. There you go. Yeah. Swans. Yeah. Uh, what about Million Year Picnic? I don't know about that one. Um, okay. Picnic. So <laughs> Million Year Picnic is, is no like Million Year Picnic. Like so, he is. I have to say. Uh, in terms of Boston, as far as like, you know, going digging for books, like in the Boston area, that's one that you have to actually really know. That's it's in uh, Harvard Square. And um, yeah, like, like it's still there. It's still there. Um, unfortunately, I think a lot more people have discovered it because there's not as many good books as there once was. Right. But, um, you know, definitely, no, but there's definitely a ton of good stuff in there. Um, like, you used to be able to get keys for like, you know, just be able to find keys in just their regular bag issue bins. Um, now most of them are behind, you know, the counter and everything like that. But um, still the same space. I think it's the same place, uh, same general vicinity. Um, but yeah, th that's a really good store. Um, but yeah, it's funny that he brings that up because that, that's that's like, uh, you know, one of the stores that like only people that I've ever known that have been like into co collecting comics have brought up. So that's pretty cool. Knights of Old <laughs> must be like old school collector from Boston. Yeah, there's a few shops like Larry's Comics is up there. Um, Couple others that I don't Harrison's comics. Uh, this is Harrison's comics. There's uh, Comicopia, Kamikaze, um, and then Comic there's Book a, there's Palace. Huh? Comic Book Palace. I've never been. I've heard of it. Um, there's a lot on the South Shore. It's funny because like there's a lot of stuff outside of Boston, and actually west of Boston, there's a lot of stuff too. So it's just like you know, if you come to Massachusetts looking for comics, you know, and you're willing to travel, you'll find some really good stuff. You just gotta, you know, kind of just branch out from actual Boston. Right. Cool. All right. So let's talk about uh, Venom First Host. Did you guys get a chance to read it? it came out on oh, Wednesday. Repeatedly here in a little bit. I uh, yeah. I'm reading it right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> well, I'm halfway done. Yeah, we can talk about it. Real okay, fresh okay. thoughts. It, it goes uh -huh. fast. It goes fast. Yeah, it's a quick read. So, uh, Justin, you want to you wanna take it? Yeah, sure. I was, uh, I don't normally read Venom books. Um, but yeah, I read this and I thought it was cool. I really liked what they did there. Um, the kind of direction of giving us this first toast as it were. Um, and how the, how they did that with, with a surprise twist. I thought that was good. I like the art. The art was, I mean, it's Mark Bagley. What you can't go wrong there. Right. So, I mean, overall I enjoyed it that's that's pretty much what i had to say it was they gave us something that i wasn't expecting in that book yeah i i i thought it was all right um i i liked when uh i liked when it bonded with that guy from the Cree. that was pretty cool mm -hmm. i was like i like that design it looked really cool I was yeah like, that was know, like I, a cool like dark hawk design yeah yeah and yeah, it was that's like, what i thought too here i was just like man like like Cause when they when they flipped over and it was like you know went to Eddie Brock I'm like shit man I want to see more of that <laughs> character I don't care about Eddie Brock's like I understand he's gonna be featured but I want to see more of what that guy was up to so I, that kind of made me sad that they uh, 
you know, ended that story. Like, oh, they ended that little arc within a few pages because that would have been really cool to see that guy. His design was incredible. Like, I was like, I'm all in to see that guy. So if they do that mashup thing, that's who I want to see. Mm -hmm. Well, Jackio says he passed on. He said he got v -Nom, which I got that as well. Yeah. But um, isn't this the first appearance in Venom First House number one? No. First appearance of what? Of Kree. That's not the first appearance. Of the Kree Venom? Yeah. 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 Yeah, because that took place during the Creed Skull War, which was long, long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, because people I've seen people on Instagram showing pictures of how some shops are already jacking. I don't know if it's a variant or one in ten or whatever, but they're already jacking prices on this book up because yeah. of that. Yeah. I see yeah, a well, couple different covers, like one with the uh, the new character, like pretty prominent on there. And I think that's what that a lot of people are going for. Well, I mean, both books are going to be first appearances. Yeah. You know, I mean, realistically, it's different host. So, yeah. so for me, it was okay. It was a quick read. Um, mm -hmm. It jumped around a little bit too much for me. Yeah. Like it started prehistorically. Then, like you said, it went to the Kree Scroll War. Um, then up to the present day, and I guess that was to you know to build up the the alley reveal. And I don't want to spoil it too much. Um, the best thing for me for this was. Um, Mark Bagley's art. Yep. He's got to be my favorite when it comes to people drawing Venom. You know, McFarlane and everybody's cool. Um, but Bagley, the way he draws Venom is just such, like, that's Venom to me, you know? Um, and there were some really cool panels that just, you know, they just look like Venom, you know? Um, so for me, that was the best part of it. Um, if I was going to rank this, I'd probably give it, like, a, a three out of five. Three mm -hmm. out of five stars. Yeah. Um, Good, you know, wasn't bad, um, but it didn't blow me away either. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of torn as to whether or not I want to read issue two now. Yeah, I, I kind of want to know, but it'll be one of those things if it comes out in two weeks, maybe I'll still remember. If it's a month, I'll probably have forgotten <laughs> right. and not care. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see yeah, issue two and be like, yeah, I guess. Uh. Mm. But this isn't going to be an ongoing, is it? It's just a. No, nah, both, right? both these are minis. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the oh, mini yeah. series. Yeah. Yeah. Then it might be something you pick up in a trade or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, at some point, I would like to know the whole story for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, like, I would be interested in seeing a story about that, that um, the Cree, you know, venomized Cree or whatever. But like, yeah. but I don't agree with or condone, you know, jacking up the price and be like, oh, that's the first. That's not first appearance. Come on now. Like, mm. first appearance in the way of that, like, what, it, like, it's, it's just there to, it's just there for the fact that, oh, it's in this book. I mean, it's a throwaway first appearance, not a real first appearance. Like, that that's at least in my mind. Um, there's no reason for that book to go, you know, to be jacked up other than the fact that people want to try to score some extra money off of it. Well, also the fact that it has a very nice, hefty print run. It's not yeah. a limited run or anything like that. So that book's mm -hmm. out there, you know. Hey, get this, it's a weekly. Oh my gosh, are you serious? They also got um, Ron Lim. They, the they first host? Him. The mm. first host is weekly? Yep. Wow. 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 I mean, if they're going to put different... It's um, scheduled to debut August 29 and run weekly for five issues. Dang. Huh. I with that. Gonna I'm going to buy that in trade. Right I'm not wasting my money. Yeah, I probably won't either. I'll read the reader online or just whatever. Yeah. I mean, that Vena, v, v, whatever you want to call it, Venom. When it's I saw like that Vietnam. 499 price tag, it's I was Vietnam. like, oh, God. Venom. That's how you say it. It's like yeah. Vietnam, so Venom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they, uh, yeah. they want to do that Vietnam. one up like, uh, you know, <laughs> I think it's like uh, Nick Fury and them are in Vietnam yeah. you know, fighting, and, and they come across, you know, the symbiote. So. Yep. Wait, symbiote or symbiote? I don't know. Oh. The way I say it. I'm not worried about. <laughs> what yeah. doesn't Nick Fury know about? Ah, uh, I don't know. That's Moon a Knight. He was the man. He was the man on the wall. That's right. Where isn't he still the man on the wall? No, I think he passed that along to um, Bucky. To Bucky, yeah. Yeah. There's that whole like really trippy Winter Soldier run. Yep. yep he was yep. the man on the wall. Yeah. Yep. I've had enough of this crap. Nick Fury knows too yeah. much. 
That's right. He's the watcher. That's what happens when you kill the. Oh yeah, he's the watcher now. Because he killed the watcher. Mm, that's true. Yep. Mm. That's so, when Bucky right. became the man on the wall because Fury took the watcher's place. Yeah. Well, here's the problem now. See, Good job, if Brian. He's, if he's the watcher, uh, Nick Fury's never been just the watcher. He's going to you know, be the watcher. The, the intervener is more like it. <laughs> so, How can yeah. he be the watcher and he's only got one eye? Oh, that's all you need. True. <laughs> you, you have to go back <laughs> I mean, to the original if, sin. If, if it's the watcher, it's a powerful eye. Like, I mean, that's a cosmic eye now. I hope he like when he needs to show up, like he rolls up in that red shield convertible, like still yep. as a watcher, but just oh, that's <laughs> <so great. laughs> that'd be funny. But yeah, I'm the watcher. I still drive. None of this is I can't drive. Just chilling on the moon. That's right. So, I uh, was speaking of chilling. Now, uh, what are you guys up to um, on your channels the next uh, few days? Um, I got something going on this weekend. <laughs> a little something, something. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, I finally got all my Boston Comic Con stuff up, uh, organized into a playlist. So if anybody wants to just watch it, you know, one at a time, all in one spot, it's right yeah. there. Um, for me, just I have to do my uh, haul and show off some stuff. Um, but this weekend for me, I'm not gonna really um, probably might make that just a haul video, not nothing too uh, fancy or special. Um, you know, gonna be doing up uh, Labor Day. Uh, just to go into a party and everything like that. So, um, you know, for me, it's, it's just a kind of a have fun weekend. Yeah, sweet. Sounds like fun. How about you, Aaron? I know you uh, had some stuff to do this weekend. Well, I think I've said this every <laughs> week for the past month, but I plan on getting a video, a haul video out. But <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to try it and get one out. I got so much crap to show but I just haven't. It's not that I'm lazy. It's just I got other things going on. And, but other than that, hopefully we'll, we'll we'll see. Okay, cool. Um, any updates on the IG raffle? Did you get anybody? No. Tagged up in there? No. Okay. No. Um, if you're watching this later, uh, strictly comics Instagram. Um, hit him up. Um, see if that raffle is still going on, or if he's got a new one. He does like those, so you may put up a new one after this. Uh, I'm not promising. I have no idea. Um, but definitely check it out. Yeah, it's a spawn number, number one, CGC 9.8. There you go. Raffle, Bam. So. And you the know quicker this, it fills up, the quicker you can raffle it off. Let's go, guys. Yeah, right. Good odds, only 10 spots. We were just talking about Greg Nicotero on that movie. You better get this book before that uh, that movie drops and the price goes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those, I'm telling you now, and as much as it sounds like, you know, people think, like, oh, there's tons of that book. When that movie gets, you know, when it drops, like you're going to see it become, yeah, it's going to become scarce and you're going to be yeah. overpaying for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many of them out there. I mean, it's there is millions. There is. Yeah. But you know what though? I mean, everybody's gonna be trying to take this to get graded. You know, just anticipation for the movie. So why not mm -hmm. just try to participate in the raffle, get one that's graded already? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Look for those newsstands. Oh those yeah. Early yeah. image newsstands. That was one percent of the print run for each of those. Yeah, that's tough. Which I might actually hold on to the newsstands I got four and yeah. five. I got two number fours now. They, um, I want to say, like, there's, there's that other one that, that I think it's like a black and white cover. It's pretty rare. Too, uh, yeah. that's, that that's, was, um, like only released in Europe, part. I think, right? Or it was just so. like the spawn thing, like the eyes, yeah. you know, like the symbol. Mm -hmm. No, there's one. I, I think it's Is like, that the one? like he's just standing. Like, he's standing all, all. Uh, it's kind of like a silhouette of him. And um, I've seen that one before. Actually, of all places, I saw that in the Newberry comics like years and years ago. But even back then, it was expensive. I think it was like something like uh, one hundred and fifty dollars, and that was like ninety eight, I think. Mm. So, I mean, the error variant with no black ink. That... That's crazy. The one Chris is talking about, you're talking about hundreds of dollars in high grade. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, like I mean, I was just uh, I've only seen it one time, and I like I just you know I, I was a teenager and didn't have the money for it at the time, but. I mean, it, it was, it's a really cool one. And I've seen it, I've seen it, um, you know, posted like people like, oh, like this is really rare, you know. So people do have them. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I haven't been able to find one in a long time. And they're very awesome. Yep. I can't find the one I was talking about. So maybe I'm just crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Justin, 
Um, what are you doing this weekend? Hanging out with you, man. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be throwing down at Dragon Con. That's right. ATL better better be ready. We're going to bring the heat. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Figuratively and literally. So <laughs> yeah, be prepared. So- yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, Saturday, um, I don't know what you guys are doing. Um, definitely want to do some type of a, a live broadcast from there, something, um, and that will be our technically our hundredth issue. Um, the the whole plan, kind of the original thing, was to have that be that um, that milestone episode, right? So if we do like something like this, you guys can still join from wherever you're gonna be um, sometime on Saturday, and then we'll just be there. Um, at the con, you know. So, yeah, so <laughs> I'm I'm thinking that our best bet, everybody, would be for me and Jesse to try to broadcast from inside the media suite because we mm-hmm. will have solid internet access in that room and okay. not many other places. That's always the big thing, right? The yes. Wi-Fi. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. You could pay okay. like a hundred dollars uh, and use that for like a day. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, we will be able to get in there because we both have the passes and everything, so it's all good. Mm -hmm. But they have, like, actual, like, LAN connections in there we can use, I believe. Sweet. Okay. Good to know. So, yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I will probably do it maybe uh, something on my channel, something on your channel, you know. Um, We'll we'll figure it out. But other, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Yeah. Like I said, Um, I'm going to try to record at least something of it, if not go live um, while I'm down there tomorrow, just to give everybody an idea of like what Friday is like down there too. Um, I want, yeah, I'm just going to grab my badge and look for one thing really quick, and then I gotta head out because it's my nephew's birthday. Sweet, that'll be fun. Sixteen years old. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're gonna be hung over the next day? No. <laughs> What do you mean, <laughs> nephew wasted? <laughs> I don't see that happening. <laughs> but no, it'll be um, good times. It'll be good times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll have we'll have a, a good solid full day there, so we'll be able to you know take in just about everything. I might, I might bore Jesse and try to play magic at some point in the game room. <laughs> okay. No, for sure. Um, yeah, there's gonna be a ton of stuff. Some pretty cool people are gonna be there. I, got, I pulled some books. Um, I know I've talked about this before. But I kind of pair up, um, like I look at the list of people that are going to be there, right? As we all do. Um, but then I use um, Comic Book DB, the database online. It's free. It's kind of like CLZ, a lighter version yeah. of it. It's mm-hmm. free. Um, and but you can search um, by like the creator, for example. And then there's a button that says "Search only in my collection," so it'll pull up all my books that match that person. And for me, that's like the easiest way to be able to oh, wow. match the guest list. To what I have in my personal collection and pull those, so I have to do that then, just because. <laughs> yeah, like what I've been doing for the last, I think, like about three years, is just being like, okay, go to them and then just like scroll down, and click, and be like I have these ones. Oh my god, I feel like a fool now. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it just it's it's really easy, you know. Um, wow, the, yeah. the key there is having your books organized so you know where to pull from. <laughs> you know what All I mean? Right. So uh, <laughs> that's that's partially what I'm gonna be doing this weekend when I get a chance. Yeah. Uh, signing up on that and then start adding some books because man that, that's yeah. gonna save me so much time yeah it's a lot of work like if you if you are and i'm sure you have a pretty decent sized collection right now mm-hmm. so to get everything loaded in will take some time but once you do you're, you're gonna love it or i mean look into clz as well i know that's more well, I have CLZ, out, but CLZ. okay but uh but uh comic book db doesn't have um doesn't have a app does it no yeah no so. app that's all right, cause cause I mean it's it's good to have you still it. Still have your phone. your web browser on your phone, right? Yeah, cause I have uh, I have CLZ. I love CLZ, so I think that's a good one. But yeah, I I don't mind cataloging in multiple applications. That's cool with me. Yep, it's just a it's just a, you know, all comes down to time. That's right. You gotta take the time to put all those comics in. Take the time with your collectibles. That's right, Brian. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's no. good. I, I I use it also, but I'm slack about it. So <laughs> some series are really complete on there. Some series, lots of holes. <laughs> yep. So now we all gotta go find this black and white spawn number one. I'm telling, dude, it, it's it's expensive. 
I mean, Let me know when you do. Just looking on eBay, I mean, most of what I see on eBay is all graded copies, and like you're gonna be spending some money, like mm -hmm. yeah. But but it's a book that hasn't gone down in value, so it, it's probably not a bad investment. Yeah, it, it's it's not, but it, it's expensive though. Yeah. So. Yep. Nice. That's it. Nice. Wow. Yep. Uh, shout out to TJ Watson. He just sent me this. Awesome. So cool. Thanks for that Steve picture, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, cool guys. Well, this has been episode ninety nine. This is a live show every week, exclusively here on YouTube. But you can catch us on the rewind, uh, as well as an audio version, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Podbean, all those places that you stream your favorite podcast from. Uh, don't forget to check out, subscribe to each of our individual channels, as well as checking out Comic Frontline, our friends over there, and mm -hmm. ComicBooked.com. For some reason, I forgot to say that the past couple of weeks, but Justin caught it, so thank you. Yep, uh, ComicBooked.com. Yep. Articles up all the time. Justin does the weekly, uh, the new comic list every every Monday. Um, so you can bring that to your shop, be armed with everything you want to pick up. So really great that he does that. Um, and um, yeah, any final thoughts from you guys? Any shout outs to the people in the chat? or Yeah, just uh, big thanks to everybody for showing up. I've been trying to jump in the chat as much as I could tonight. It was a lot of fun. So thanks yep. for everybody for showing up. It's always That's always like kind of the highlight of the show is just seeing like what people are talking about and stuff. So Yep. <laughs> Sometimes they're saying stuff that's so funny. It like throws me off and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly but yeah other than that just thanks everybody for showing up great show and uh we'll be seeing y'all just in a couple days from dragon con dragon con yeah, yeah. all right have a good night everybody thanks for joining us bye